Well, hello everyone and welcome to another very exciting episode here on the MI Gardener channel. I am so excited for this one because in this episode, I'm going to show you all my secrets to growing 10 foot tall tomato plants. I am so excited to film this episode because we've had a flood of people ever since I posted a picture of my tomato plants higher than I can jump, higher than I can jump. People were saying, Luke, you have to share your secrets. And to be honest, I don't have any secrets, but if you want to call them my secrets, uh, that's fine too. Um, <laughs> I guess my secrets are not being revealed. Uh, but they're really nothing different than what I've been promoting in years past. The thing is, this year was just a perfect storm that everything happened right. And I'm going to be perfectly honest and say that, that in, in, in years past, things happened right and there was things that happened wrong. And it only takes one wrong thing to set you back quite a bit. And I think this year was just an absolute breakout year because we had a perfect storm, like I said, of everything going right. So let's get into it on how I grow 10 foot tall tomato plants. Let's go. So the first thing with growing a 10 foot tall tomato plant is staking. Staking has everything to do with a 10 foot tall tomato plant because without it, you'll probably have about a three foot tall tomato plant because it's gonna grow up and usually they can only support themselves about two feet tall before they fall over. And that's because tomato plants are a vine, but they're a very weak vine. And they do need some more, they do need support to help them up. So what we've done is we've attached them to a eight foot tall furring strip. And had we had a taller furring strip, we probably could have even gone even further. We've since actually topped our topped off our tomato plants at 10 feet tall because they're two feet past the eight foot furring strip. So uh, we really can't allow them to grow any taller. Now, had we had you know, a greenhouse and we were using a stringing method, that's what a lot of commercial greenhouse growers will do. And they will string them from the roof or from the, uh, the, the top, uh, I guess, support beams and they'll hang them down with strings and they'll string their tomato plants versus using uh, like wood furring strips, um, which is very effective and very great. And they can get 20 foot tall tomato plants no problem because the staking method that you choose will dictate the height of the tomato plant. If you get those dinky little tomato cages that are three, four feet tall, oftentimes people say, what, well, you know, my tomato plants never get taller than maybe four or five feet tall before they stop growing. Yeah, it's because you, cho you chose the height at the beginning of the season. And while it might look a little bit silly, it might look a little bit ridiculous, in fact, a lot of people wondered what the heck we were even doing when we had eight foot tall furring strips in the ground um, you know, when we first planted our garden out because they looked completely naked, just all standing up in the, in the air with nothing on them. And I told people, I said, come back in September because I know for a fact we're gonna have tomato plants that are far exceeding the furring strips at that point. And sure enough, they don't look very silly anymore. The second thing that we do to make sure that our plants hit 10 feet tall or even more is to make sure we fertilize properly. Tomato plants, a lot of times people will say nitrogen in the beginning, phosphorus, it, you know, uh, mid season to promote flowering. But we take an approach of a balanced fertilizer. We use trifecta plus in the beginning, which is mostly an all season feed, but we do follow up about mid season to make sure that these plants continue growing and stay and stay healthy and strong. So we'll fertilize right around maybe early to mid July um, to make sure that they're, they're going strong throughout the rest of the growing season. And it's really crucial to make sure that your fertilizer is well balanced. If you give it a lot of nitrogen in the beginning, you're going to have a lot of green growth, but not a lot of flowering. But if you give it a lot of phosphorus, it's going to put out a lot of flowers, but it's going to stop growing. And usually once tomato plants stop growing, it's hard to get them to start growing again. And you've already lost a lot of time. They will start up again if you allow them to use up their phosphorus, do all of their flowering, and then pump the nitrogen again. But then once the plant starts growing, then it's really hard to get it to start flowering again. So it's kind of a, a yeah, it's kind of a, it's a double-edged sword. Um, you can promote growth, but then you don't get a whole lot of flowers, but then you get a whole lot of flowers and you can't promote a whole lot of growth. By going a balanced approach, you're going to have slower flowering and slower growth, but they're going to be even, meaning if you can keep it going all season long, I don't know if you can see the top of the, the I don't know if you can see the top of the uh, plants here, they are loaded with flowers, absolutely loaded with flowers. So it's not just growth that we're getting, it's growth plus flowers, which equals massive yields in just a small square footage. Each one of these plants, because we're using a single stemming with a staking method, are really only taking up about two square feet, which is insane for the amount of tomatoes we've actually gotten off these plants. 
The third way to ensure that you have a 10 foot tall tomato plant is by picking the right type of tomato plant. If you pick something like a determinate tomato, that is a determined height and a determined fruit set, and it will usually put out all that fruit, ripen at once, and then be done, meaning it won't continue growing upwards. Whereas an indeterminate variety will grow all season long and it'll continue growing as long as you provide the nutrients and, uh, and the, the staking and things like that for it to continue growing, it will do so. But then also adding on to that, big tomatoes like these, these huge, hefty, massive tomatoes, Typically the plant will put more energy into producing large, uh, hefty tomatoes than it does growing. So you'll find that on your smaller cherry tomatoes, those are the plants that you're going to get around 10 feet tall or more in a growing season. Because these plants here, they'll hit about five to six feet, but that's because they're putting about, I'd say, at least 50 to 60% of their energy into growing these massive tomatoes. So they are definitely not something that I would pick if I wanted a nice, tall, productive tomato plant. So go with cherries, plums, or just small, uh, like grape style tomatoes, because those require far less energy to put out, meaning the plant can, again, put more of its energy into growing as well as flowering, rather than just fruit production. Now the fourth way to get a 10 foot tall tomato plant is to properly prune. As you can see, we've single stemmed our tomato plants. Single stemming will do a lot of things. It will increase airflow to decrease uh, disease and powdery mildew and blights, which also end the season early. But it also, what it helps you do is to focus energy upwards rather than laterally. So we've gone through here and in the, in the crook of every single leaf node, you'll find that there is usually a small plant growing. And if you allow those plants to grow, they'll produce all new plants that will flower and fruit, which could seem great for a, uh, you know, more production. But if you're going for a tall and productive tomato plant that takes up very little space, it's definitely not what you want. So single stemming is your way to go. Now, nearing the end of the season, when we have about a month left in our growing season, we will stop single stemming and we'll allow the top of the plant to, to bush out and grow. But we still will continue to single stem anything down here because that's typically where the blight begins. So I like to have this way more free for airflow, but up top, that's where we let it kind of go crazy. But that's only in the final month or two of, uh, of the growing season, because we want to maximize fruit production as much as possible. And since we've already topped them off so they can't get any taller, really all we're focusing on now is just ripening the fruit and putting out any more fruit that we could possibly uh, produce. And the fifth and final tip that I can give you all is harvest early and harvest often because oftentimes a lot of gardeners will tend to leave their, their fruits on. One of the downsides to leaving your fruits on is that the plant is banking on this fruit going to complete ripeness so that it can have its genetic, uh, you know, its genetic information being the seeds inside of the fruit, having that be preserved for future generations. And so it'll focus a lot of energy on ripening its fruit rather than growing and flowering and doing other things like that. So as soon as you start to see your fruit blush, even a little bit, we still pick our tomatoes just a tad bit green on the top because once they start blushing, the fruit pretty much has gained all of its flavor. It will continue to, to sweeten a little bit. So we'll let ours go about 90% ripeness. At about 90% ripeness, you're not going to see a massive difference in flavor, but you'll see a massive difference uh, when you add up, you know, that 10% on that fruit over the entire growing season, your plant is going to thank you in the long run well, not really thank you, but it's going to thank you by giving you more fruit, I guess, uh, because it's not going to be spending energy on ripening just a few tomatoes because it's once you harvest this tomato off of the plant, the tomato says, okay, some, something has happened to this fruit. I need to make more to make sure that my genetic information is being carried on to another generation. So uh, you want to make sure that you are harvesting often and harvesting early. Um, and that same thing goes with beans, cucumbers, uh, almost all vegetables are like that where the more you harvest, the more you get. And that's a good thing for gardeners that love tomatoes because you're guaranteed to get tons of tomatoes and, uh, and you're guaranteed to get a really healthy tall plant putting out lots of tomatoes if you don't let them sit on the vine forever. So there you go. There are five easy to follow tips that are going to get you growing a 10 foot tall tomato plant in no time at all. And 10 foot tall plus, might I add. The sky is the limit if you keep your plants healthy and provide the staking, like I said. So I do recommend trying this. And I'm gonna leave you with one more bonus tip. 
A sixth bonus tip is make sure your plant stays stress-free. If your plant is stressed, it's going to take a lot of energy into fighting whatever's stressing it, whether it be disease or uh, drought or uh, temperature or sunlight, things like that. Making sure that your plant has optimum growing conditions is going to make sure that the stressors on the plant is as little as possible, meaning instead of fighting stress, it can actually focus on growing and producing fruit for you. So it's a kind of an obvious one, but I do think it's important to note because I know a lot of times people, they say that as the growing season winds on, they stop, they stop uh, watering their tomato plants to make sure that it uh, kind of stresses the fruit out to ripen it. And that is true. You're going to stress your tomato plant out to ripen its fruit, but you're also going to stop its growth where you can limit the amount of fruit that it can put out in a given season. So it's a little give and take. You just have to decide what you want to do. And these are techniques to follow. They're not guaranteed to, uh, you know, to work every single time because a lot of the other growing conditions, like I said, are actual, uh, you know, they're, they're stuff that the plant needs to grow. So these are techniques that are going to help you get a 10 foot tall tomato plant. But if you want to actually know how to grow a tomato plant properly, I'd recommend checking out our complete growing guide on tomatoes because that plus the techniques that I've given you will help you grow a 10 foot tall tomato plant. Um, and those, that's really truly the secret is combining both of those together. So I do hope you try it. I hope you share this video with your friends. If you uh, found this fun, found this entertaining and also throw a like up there. Um, I know sometimes a lot of you guys hate hear me, hearing me say, throw a like up there, it really helps us out, but it really truly does. It helps spread this video around to more people that would probably like to see this video. And uh, it's something that I think a lot more people would like a 10 foot tall tomato plant. So I'm not kidding you. This thing is as tall as I've ever had one. And I absolutely am floored by it because look at this, <laughs> we're getting so many tomatoes. So as always, I hope you all enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new and we'll catch you all later. See ya. Bye.